Let's get into this review and this video right away by talking about the screen of this pretty awesome device. It packs a 6.8 inch OLED full HD display with LG's dubbed cinematic full vision. That means the display is 20 and a half by nine and that's the ratio that you get. The resolution is 2460 by 1080 and you get a second identical screen of the same quality and caliber in the dual screen uh, slash display case. This is a phenomenal looking display and it looks the same on the display case as well. And it has an in-display fingerprint sensor, which I absolutely love. One thing that's missing from the display is a high refresh rate option. The hardware just isn't capable of it. But to me, that isn't a big deal and I don't really care about its omission. Would it be nice? Yes, it would be nice to have that available. But is it something I need? No, I don't think it is, and it's okay that it doesn't offer the higher refresh rate options on this device, to me, anyways. The V60 ThinQ has 128 gigabytes of internal storage available right out of the box. About 99 gigabytes of that is usable to you because of system files and things and apps and preloaded apps and all that type of stuff that's installed on the device. The good thing is that the V60 has a micro SD card slot that is compatible with cards up to two terabytes of storage. You shouldn't be limited to internal storage of your device, especially when you pay a premium for it, and it should be able to extend storage if and when you want to or need to. This thing packs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 octa-core processor that allows for 5G connectability. Your mileage may vary considering who is your service provider and if they offer that type of speed or connection and if you're in an area that has 5G coverage. Luckily, I'm in an area that is covered by T-Mobile's 5G network, and I will say it's pretty nice to have. 5G is in and of itself a really nice move into the future, and I will find it difficult to go back to non-5G devices since having experienced this new connection. But I will say it's spotty at times from where I live. I live in northern Utah. Other means of connectivity on this device, the V60 has Wi-Fi 6 compatibility and Bluetooth 5.1. So you're going to be able to stay connected easily into the future. So if you buy this thing, you're pretty much future-proofing yourself for at least two years, I would say, because they're early adopters of 5G and Wi-Fi 6. I couldn't test Wi-Fi 6 because I don't have a Wi-Fi 6 a router. Let's keep this video rolling and talk about LG's famously good audio. That is no exception here. You get a 32-bit high fidelity quad digital to analog converter built into the V60. And you also get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that uses that DAC to its fullest. I slapped my Sennheiser IE400 Pro headphones on uh, in this thing and it sounds pretty freaking fantastic. It sounds really, really good. There's also an internal one watt top and a 1.3 watt bottom speaker built in and they do a good job at spacing out sound evenly, making it sound pretty good uh, when you're listening uh, to or consuming media in any way, shape or form without headphones on. LG delivers in the sound department, giving you access to the device's EQ in the settings, making it possible to adjust sound to your liking. Let's just say this, the audio on the V60 will not disappoint you because you have full control of taking advantage of all the sound features that this thing offers. Sound is subjective, so this way the V60 allows you to adjust sound to your liking, and that is a really nice inclusion on a flagship device especially when you uh, consume media and all that type of stuff. It's a nice to have. The V60 has a single USB Type-C port and wireless charging ability. Uh, this device has Qualcomm's Quick Charge 4.0 Plus, uh, which means you can top this thing off pretty quickly if you have a fast wireless charger. 
One thing to know is that when you're using the dual screen case, LG gives you this magnetic adapter that I'm really not a fan of. I absolutely hate this thing. So I always take it out of the case to charge it. Uh, so you can keep the V60 uh, charged up um, and keep it charged within the case. It's not a direct connection to the device. In my limited use, uh, the charging time isn't affected by using that magnetic adapter. Also, you can wirelessly charge this device with the case on if you want to or need to. Um, it's a little bit slower, I will say. I didn't really measure it effectively or like scientifically or objectively or anything like that, but I, I did notice there was a little bit slower charge time when uh, the phone was in the case uh, rather than it just being directly on the charger without the case on. Since we're talking about the dual screen and while we're on it and uh, this whole case thing, this uh, whole idea of it, it is capable of flipping a full 360 degrees and has uh, a notification display on the front. Uh, additionally, like I said earlier, it's the same screen quality and resolution on the actual V60. This case has a weird hinge and a super reflective front like that from the G8X. I'm not a fan of this and I never really use the dual screen. It's just the, the fingerprints and the, the mirror type texture and reflective ability I just am not a fan of and I don't really like. On a good note with this though, it doesn't uh, drag too much on the battery if you have this uh, uh, with the phone as well, but it does cut into the battery life a bit on this device. In my limited time using the device, uh, and if I had to guess, the dual screen takes about an hour to an hour and a half off of screen time uh, if you're using the V60 within it in the case. So if you have it out, you're gonna get a little bit more screen on time. So it comes at a small cost of using it, which is uh, really nice. And I mean, if you need that extra screen real estate, it's, it's there for you. The dual screen case is a great concept. I just don't like using it. It's probably because the mirror reflective ability or reflectiveness on the front, it's just a really big turn off and it's really, it's a big device. And this case just makes it bigger. It turns this already big phone into a dedicated two hand tablet, basically. You can get away with using this thing with one hand without the case, but when as soon as you throw it in this dual screen thing, you're gonna have to dedicate full attention and use of this thing because it is huge. Since we're talking about battery, Let's just say the 5,000 milliamp hour battery that's built into the V60 gets me through a day with 20 to 30% left under heavy use at the end of the night. It's really one of the first Android phones that I've had the pleasure of using that matches like my iPhone 11 Pro's battery life when using it. I'm just not concerned with battery. There's no power anxiety or battery anxiety surrounded the V60. When using this device as I would regularly, I could probably easily get through two days of using this device with the built-in power management tools that LG offers. LG has done a fantastic job with the V60's power management and it really has been a great user experience. Let's just say this again. The V60 has a fantastic battery. It's one of the best that I've ever had. And it, it's something that you should really take note of if you are considering this device. The battery on this thing is the best that I've ever experienced on any Android device. Let's get to moving this review to a close by talking about the cameras. There is an array of rear cameras, a 64 megapixel standard uh, sensor, a 13 megapixel wide angle with 117 degrees of field of view, and LG's Z camera uh, sensor that is used to capture depth data. There's one 10 megapixel front facing camera that is pretty decent if I do say so myself. Here's an opportunity for me to showcase the front facing camera as well as the audio recording capabilities of the V60. This is 4K at 29.97 frames per second. I wanted to get in an area where there was a lot of detail so you could see how it's uh, rendering that and resolving all of that, that nice detail in the background. Uh, the one thing with the front facing camera is that you can do 4K 60. I'll hop over to that demonstration here in a second, but here's a good opportunity for you to see how it's adjusting for dynamic range with the sky and my face and all of this detail. It's doing a really good job for a front facing camera on a smartphone and the audio also sounds really well or sounds really good. And in my opinion, it is absolutely usable for sharing online content to social media. Here's a 4K 60 frames per second sample uh, as well, seeing how it resolves all the detail in the background here as well as my face and records sound 
it's much more crisper uh, it's a much more crisp image in from my perspective when I'm looking at it on the phone and again this is a front-facing camera so you can see that it's doing a really good job at uh, the roll-off here on the sky where my finger is and all of the detail in the leaves and stuff is standing out and it's doing a really good job at putting all this stuff together now my final project is going to be exported out at 24 frames per second so you may not see the clarity difference in that I may upload this sample here directly so you can evaluate it uh, for yourself in its true form uh, feel free to hit the links in the description to see that and to see how that performs I think it does a great job as far as a front-facing camera is and again another fantastic option for sharing to social media directly on your smartphone this is me walking with the phone handheld no gimbal or anything like that so the smartphone is stabilizing this image for me I'm walking uphill in the mountainous area of here in northern Utah and it's doing a fantastic job at just stabilizing this footage for me. You can see that the dynamic range is much improved on the rear facing camera than it is on the front facing and you can see over here it's doing a good job at auto adjusting for me. I just wanted to point, take this thing out, shoot with it, see how the sounds being recorded and do and all that nice thing. So this is 4K 29.9 frames per second and it is a good option for you. So let's hop over to the 4K60. Here is 4K60. It's also stabilizing the footage for me within the camera. Walking up this hill, same sample. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can point it to make adjustments to the leaves. It's resolving all that detail really well. Dynamic range is really, really good on this. Uh, go over here to this blown out area. It's adjusting for it really nicely. And it's also stabilizing my footage for me. So with this, let's hop over to an 8K sample of this camera because this camera is capable of shooting 8K resolution. Here's an opportunity for me to share with you the 8K resolution that's being captured on this device. The LG V60 is capable of shooting 8K video. So you can see it's doing a pretty good job at resolving all of this data, especially for a smartphone. I mean, this is amazing. I'm shooting 8K footage on a smartphone. My C200 is not capable of that, neither is my Sony a7 III and here I am shooting 8K footage on a smartphone. Uh, as I walk you can see it's a little bit more jittery because of the sensor but it's doing a good job at stabilizing that. Uh, this is all shot handheld and if you're uh, looking at the dynamic range of it it's doing a pretty good job. I think it's a pretty good option especially, especially having it available to you in your pocket on your smartphone. Uh, I would say it's probably a better option if you're gonna uh, stabilize your footage or take some time and shoot some s slow steady moving stuff because uh, this is a really nice option. It's having some difficulty focusing because it's capturing all this data. It's a really Interesting concept to add 8K to a smartphone. Uh, is it ready for mainstream? I think I don't think so because it takes a long time to process and upload that footage But if you wanted to take some 8K footage you can on the V60 I will say that this is going to be compressed into a 4k timeline So I'm going to take this 8K footage and shrink it down for you in this video I don't know if I'll be able to upload the raw footage of this in its true 8K format, but I'll try and if that is possible, it'll be linked in the description down below. Uh, what do you think of this? Feel free to leave me a comment um, giving, giving me your thoughts on this 8K footage. I thought I'd take an opportunity and film myself with 8K resolution on the V60 and tell you about pictures. And uh, if you want to take a look at full resolution pictures, between the sensors and all that type of stuff that are unedited, uncompressed, all that type of stuff. There will be a link in the description that will direct you to my website where you can look at those pictures and be the judge for yourself. I literally just took this camera out, opened it up, uh, opened up the camera app and shot pictures and switched between the lenses so you could look at them. I didn't make any adjustments, I didn't go into manual mode or anything like that because I think that most people that are evaluating phones or that shoot vid uh, videos and photos on their phone uh, really just want something that shoots really good photos as you take it out of your pocket without having to tinker with all those settings Anyways, um, that's down there if you want to look at it feel free to check it out now that you've seen that and kind of listened to my review at $900 at the launch of this device the LG V60 is absolutely worth your consideration if you're in the market for a new phone right now It has a phenomenal battery life great cameras stunning audio and a pretty great screen if I do say so myself 
It is something that you should definitely consider if you're looking to purchase a device. Uh, the only bad things that I can think of on this thing is that it's absolutely a monstrous device. It's, it's, if you have small to medium sized hands, this device is gonna require two hands. Um, if you have big hands, it's gonna be all right. But if you have big hands and you wanna use the dual screen, still gonna be a two-handed device. That's the only bad thing about this thing is that how large it is, but I guess you can sacrifice that for battery life. If I, if you're thinking about it in terms of like practicality, the battery is just, it's unbeatable, unmatched. Like you could easily get through two days of use if you don't use it heavily. And if you enabled LG's power management tools on this thing, you could probably crack into a third day. It is literally that good. I'm not joking. So if you're interested in pricing and availability, I'll be leaving that linked in the description. Uh, full disclosure with that, that those are my affiliate links. So purchasing through those give me a little bit of commission based off your purchase that costs you nothing in addition. And that also helps you or helps me or helps you support me and the content creation here on this channel. Before I close, I must disclose LG was kind enough to send this device out to me for testing and review. So without them, this would not have been possible. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I am Tomas and I will catch you in the next one.